three, two, one. Hello, my name is Anisha Freeman. I'm also known as the locksmith because I make keys for people who are locked up in their minds. I'm here today to introduce you to a new radio show entitled From Madness to Miracles, sponsored by Flint Odyssey House. For those of you who may not be familiar with Flint Odyssey House, Odyssey House is a 501c3 tax-exempt organization that's headquartered in downtown Flint, Michigan. We serve hundreds of families struggling with substance abuse and Annually with a goal of long-term recovery for each and every client we serve. We also have an annual event by the same no name as the radio show entitled From Madness to Miracles. This year, this particular uh, this year, the event will be held at Horizons Conference Center, which is located at 6200 State Street in Saginaw, Michigan. It will be held Wednesday, September the 12th from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., and it is open to the public. We also have opportunities for vendor booths and tables, and if you're interested, you can call Tanya Evans at 810 423-9139 or Trenton Odette at 810-449-2678. And this particular event is being held for National Recovery Month. And we, we're going to have a dinner and a celebration to honor those in long-term recovery who have beat the odds and become beacons of hope for those who are still struggling with addiction. And that's pretty much what this particular radio show is going to be about. We're going to focus on recovery. We're going to talk about addiction, but our main focus is going to be on the recovery process. And my Anisha, me, Anisha Freeman, I'm actually a person in long-term recovery. And what that means is that I have not used any drugs or alcohol alcohol in over 18 years. So today's show is sort of like a little teaser uh, introducing you to the show which will be held, which we will have every Saturday. It will be on on Saturdays from 10 to 11 a.m. and also on from 10 to 11 p.m. And we're going to have guests. We're going to have guest speakers. There's no guests this week, but we will, starting next week, we will have guest speakers. But we're also going to have recovery-related topics each week. And we're going to have topics such as the difference between abstinence and recovery. And this is going to be a judgment-free zone. So we're not going to get into an argument about what's better, uh, abstinence or recovery, or if there's a difference. We're just going to talk about what it's like to be clean from drugs and alcohol, but what it's also like to recover, to, to, to have complete restoration in your life. We're going to talk about learning how to manage emotions and process feelings in recovery. We'll have guests talking about what it was like in early recovery, learning new coping skills. Because we know people who struggle with addiction, they're actually using, um, I'm sorry, I, I have an we're going to have the show is going to be, I, I said, said it wrong. The show is going to be on Saturdays from 10 a.m. in from 10 a.m. And it's going to be on 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. And it's going to be on 92.1 LPFM, Flint. <laughs> And so uh, we were talking about topics. So we're going to have topics such as the resocialization process. And you were like, well, what are you talking about, Anisha Freeman, the resocialization process? Well, if, for some of us, not everyone, but a lot of us who uh, were struggling with active addiction for a long periods of time, we became accustomed to a drug subculture. And we have social skills. We had to learn how to navigate those environments. And when we get clean, we have to relearn social skills and how to interact with people. For example, when I first got clean, I spoke fluent profanity because I came from a world where that's how we talked to each other. It, it, we didn't curse when we were angry. That's how we greeted each other. That's how we spoke. So when I got clean, and I moved into a recovery house, that's how I spoke. So uh, one of the things that happened for me is that the director of the recovery house, who was also a person in long-term recovery, when I would speak to her, she would paraphrase everything I said back to me without the curse words. So she was actually re-socializing me. She was teaching me how to live, and she was not judging me. You know, it didn't come from, she understood where I came from and that I was in early recovery and that I needed help. We're going to talk about reuniting with children in recovery because a lot of us have either lost our children due to drug or alcohol use, uh, or and some of us 
were fortunate enough that we, ha we were able to reconnect with these children, but it was a messy process. It wasn't like I had these visions that when I got clean, that uh, me and my daughter, my oldest daughter, that we would run into each other's arms and the wind would be blowing and, and, and there would be music in the background and we would be on Oprah, mother and daughter, united, reunited after being separated by the horrors of active addiction. That is not what happened. It was ugly, it was messy, she was angry, and she had a right to be angry. She was angry about all of those years that I didn't take her to Cedar Point. She was angry about all of those years she got teased and cursed about her mother, you know, teased and, and made fun of about her mother being on drugs. And, and, and those, are, those are the edited, that's the edited version of what people were saying to her. I took all the curse words and the nasty labels out. So she had, and her anger was valid. And, but I didn't have the coping tools to deal with her anger early in recovery. And so we're gonna talk about that and what I had to do and, and, and the people who helped me uh, go work through that process. We're gonna talk about grieving in recovery. That's gonna be a whole show. We're gonna have a whole show that talks strictly about grieving in recovery. And there's a lot of grief Sometimes it's actually we're grieving for people who have died and we may have been under the influence of drugs and alcohol and we were too numb to actually go through the grieving process. And then when we get clean, we all of, all of those feelings that we suppressed, they come rushing back and we realize that these people are gone. And sometimes we have to realize that we, didn't, we were in active addiction and didn't make the funeral. We didn't have closure. We didn't have a chance to say goodbye at the hospital before before they pass. So we're going to talk about grieving in recovery, but there's also other losses. Some people don't get their kids back. I'm also, I'm a person in long-term recovery, but I'm also a master's level therapist. And I've worked with a lot of women and men. They, their rights were terminated. They're in recovery. They're doing the right thing. But in some cases, it's too late that their, their, their children have been adopted. And, and, and how do you deal with that early in recovery? How do you, you, you come out of the insanity of active addiction and you're actually sane and you, you, you get restored to sanity and you have to look at what you did in an insane state and, and come to terms with it and still stay in the recovery process? We're going to actually have guests who can tell you from personal experience what that was like. We're going to talk about grieving lost relationships, lost opportunities. There's a lot of talented, it's very, very talented, very uh, smart people um, who struggle with the dis-ease of addiction. And I do believe in the dis disease model. Um, people can have their opinion about what they believe. I believe that addiction is a disease. And when we look back and, and, and say, well, I lost a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of smart, talented people who have let 20 years of their life go away. They, they're now, they, they may come into recovery in their 30s or 40s. Some people come in recovery in their 50s or 60s, and they look back over all of those years that they lost to the disease of addiction and all of the things they didn't do, and they have to work through the grieving process of, of what they lost, what they don't have, what they can't get back and still move forward with their lives. So we're going to talk about how do you do that. We're going to talk about rebuilding trust with those we've harmed in active addiction. I know for me personally, my family didn't even really believe I was clean. Some members of my family, they didn't even believe I was clean until I had like five years in. They were not impressed by my 60-day clean and my 90-day clean, and they weren't. I had did that over and over again. So we're going to talk to people who've actually had to rebuild trust with their family, and they were able to do it, but it was a process. And so we're also going to talk about uh, pursuing education in recovery because we get clean and we, we, we start building our, our recovery foundation and then we start saying, well, I want to do some other things. You know, I've been giving all of my life to active addiction. What do I do now? So we have to learn how to do this balancing act. We have to learn how to balance our recovery duties because you have to maintain your recovery. You have to do ongoing recovery maintenance. So how do I balance recovery 
family, work, school. How do I do that? We're going to talk about cleaning up the wreckage of one's past. A lot of us get clean. We have old debts. We have uh, old uh, court cases we've been running from, and we got to go down and tell these people, here I am. You know, how do you do that and face those fears and go clean up your name and pay off tickets and things like that? We're going to talk about dealing with life on life terms, traffic, the, the washing machine break down, yeah. you know, all of these things that people with active addiction who've really, really, really been deep in their addiction, they haven't had to deal with it. Their only job was to get one more. And so now they have to learn how to live life on life terms. So we're going to, you know, really take, have a very variety of topics. We may get to the point where we're doing, taking calls or, or emails and suggestions. We'll think of, we'll talk about that, uh, topics from our audience. Um, and we're also going to give you resources, connect you with resources. So if you or anybody in your family is struggling with the dis-ease of addiction um, and you would like some help, well, Odyssey House has a number you can call. You can call 810-238-5888. We also have a 24-hour crisis line where someone is always available, whether a, after business hours you can call. And that number is 810-238-04. 0483. And so I'm very excited for this opportunity and, and we'll be we'll be right back right after this I spend a lot of time in my backyard. I feed the birds and the bees. I love my flowers. The color in my garden keeps the pink of my cheeks. I was very independent and thought I could take care of myself. I fell and I had to have meals on wheels. I love them, they're my savior. And I look forward to volunteers because they've all become my friends. It's Meals on Wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. Hello, it's DJ Effie, and I'm here at the Odyssey House. If you are sick of the battle of addiction and you need help winning the fight, let Odyssey help equip you with the weapons to win your war. Call us today at 810-238-5888 or at Sagna Odyssey House, 1-800-571-HELP. That's Flint at 810-238-5888 and Saginaw at 1-800-571-HOPE. Be strong enough to win your war. Due to technical difficulties beyond our control, our regular programming has been interrupted. You're listening to WFOV 92.1 LPFM Flint. Repeating, repeating, due to technical difficulties beyond our control, our regular broadcasting has been interrupted. You are listening to WFOV 92.1 LPFM Flint. It's Thursday night and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. Oh. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in, say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life.
Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. We need you. WFOV 92.1 LP FM Flint is looking for volunteers, reporters, producers, on-air talent, and radio shows. If you're interested in providing any or all of those services, please give us a call at 810-259-9789. We need you. 810-259-9789. We need field reporters, producers, talk show hosts, and programming. If you're interested... Call us again at 810-259-9789. A project of Flynn Odyssey House. Do you find yourself thinking about changing your life? Do you want to learn how to care for yourself? All the tools you will ever need to lead a successful, substance-free life can be found at the Odyssey House. Right here and now, make the call, 810-238-5888. You'll find support, true concern, and a new family. It's never too late. Odyssey House, living above the influence. Welcome back. This is Anisha Freeman, also known as the locksmith, because I make keys for people who are locked up in their minds. And this is the From Madness to Miracles radio show hosted by Flint Odyssey House. So we're talking about the show. I'm doing a little teaser just to familiarize you with the content of the show. And as I said before the break, we're going to be talking about addiction and recovery, but we're going to spend most of the time talking about the recovery process. And I'll have guest speakers on. So we talked about some of the topics uh, before the break and I want you to know that one thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we help people understand addiction and that in most cases people who are addicted are seeking the absence of pain sometimes the pain is physical a lot of people you've heard you've been hearing about the opioid crisis a lot of people get addicted to painkillers and 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 they were seeking the absence of physical pain and and they ended up addicted to uh, the painkillers but then there are people who start out getting using drugs and alcohol for recreational uh, um, purposes, and then they they discover that the drugs and alcohol does some other things, like it suppresses mental and emotional pain. There's a lot of people who really didn't understand that there was something wrong until they actually used. And then they were able to do some things under the influence of drug and drugs and alcohol that they couldn't do before they used. Meaning some people, once they, uh, in, in a support group I attend, we call it once they ingested the magic formula, they were able to stand up to them for themselves. They didn't feel inhibited. They could, they would get out on a dance floor and dance and, and they couldn't do it before. And so they, they said, wow, I've, I've discovered this formula that allows me to do things I couldn't do before. But what they didn't understand is that the magic formula comes with a heavy price tag. Um, you're getting, you know, it's going to wreck your life. It's going to destroy relationships. It's going to destroy you financially. And so in recovery, we find that we can address those issues that we've been suppressing, that we use the drugs and alcohol to suppress. So we will be talking about that. I call it the psychological aspect of addiction. A lot of people will kick the drugs physically and they don't understand. They have to work on those core issues, those unaddressed issues that they were uh, using drugs and alcohol to suppress for short increments of time. So we will be talking about that. Another thing we'll be doing is we will be using some chapters from a book I wrote as topics. I, um, I was, for several years, I was a columnist for the Grand Rapids Times, which is a multicultural newspaper in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I had a column entitled, What's Really Going On? And the column actually turned into a book. People were requesting uh, different uh, uh, articles. So I put them all in a book. And so we will use some of those chapters as titles. Like I have titles such as, was it the trap or the cheese? What's your cheese? That's going to be a very interesting topic because we're going to be talking about still 
in the vein of of, of talking of, of recovery, talking about addiction and recovery, but we'll be talking about also like the lifestyle uh, of drugs, selling, using and selling drugs, and how a lot of people get trapped because they're looking at the cheese and they miss the jaws of the trap. But that can happen in relationships too. So we'll use, that'll be one of our topics. We'll also use a topic called, uh, what type of esteem do you have? You know, do you have self-esteem or, or do you have uh, clothes esteem, people esteem? There, and, it, and it still has a lot to do with addiction because a lot of people who don't have self-esteem, they look for outside things to fix an internal problem and that's how a lot of people get trapped up in addiction. Now, our primary focus will be on drug addiction, but I know we're going to also talk about other addictions because in recovery, some people will stop the drugs and alcohol and they don't address those core underlying issues that we talked about earlier. And so they switch to other addictions. So they get the food addiction, they get the gambling addiction, you get the shopping addiction. So we will also talk about other addictions that manifest itself uh, in people who have the addictive personality and it still can be traced to issues that need to be addressed. Um, one of my favorite topics in the book that we're gonna talk about is the non-negotiable goal. Now, when I was using drugs and alcohol, getting high there's a point in addiction where you cross this invisible line it and, and, and in a lot of recovery programs they call it turning a cucumber into a pickle like once you turn a cucumber into a pickle it will never be a cucumber again it's like you cross this invisible line and you're not going back to being a cucumber so that's why you have to do the maintenance work to stay in the recovery process and not relapse so uh, as it relates to the non-negotiable goal I had there's a point when I crossed over when Dr. Jackal became Mr. Hat and never went back to being Dr. Jackal anymore. I just stayed in hide mode. And so um, when I would come to because I didn't go to sleep and I didn't wake up, I passed out and came to. I'm talking about when the addiction got to that point. And so it was never it was never a question of if I was going to get high. Like I can never remember coming to saying, well, I sure hope I'm going to get high today. It, I didn't even discuss it. It was a given. And, and I had obstacles. You know, I had obstacles. Like, like I, I got, you know, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. And, and, and Michigan gets cold in the winter. I know this is brand new information for you, but Michigan is cold. I never came to and was like, wow, it's like the windshield factor is 30 below zero. I, I'm, it never stopped me. That was never even in my mind. There was a serial killer out back when I was on this, working in the Woodward Avenue area. So, you know, I was on the street supporting my habit. He killed 30, 17 girls, rather, 17 girls in that area. He was out there, and I knew he was out there. They eventually caught him. Um, I actually know the young lady who was the only person who got away from him, and she helped the police track him down. And I never woke up and came to and was like, wow, there's a serial killer out there. I probably shouldn't go. It was getting high had become non-negotiable. So in this, when in my book, when, when we'll talk about it um, on the air, I had to learn how to put the non-negotiable criterion on my goals and recovery because it was on my goal of getting high. I had a budget. It was only one thing on the budget, dope. But I followed that budget religiously. And anything that came in, tried to impose on that budget, I was, no, that's not on the budget. This is, this is, this money has a purpose and nothing will deter me from using this money for what it has been appropriated for. But then I get in recovery and don't know how to control my spending. So I had to, I wrote some material to help people in recovery challenge themselves because a lot of times I've, no, I've worked with not just me and people in my recovery support system. But like I said, I'm a master's level therapist. I consulted with Drug Court and Sobriety Court in Grand Rapids uh, as I worked with them from 2004 to 2015. So I will, I will work with people. A lot of times people would get clean and they would act like they couldn't do certain things. And so I would have to remind them of how multifunctioning they were in active addiction. I would have to challenge them. 
You know, you don't, you get clean and turn into the extra fluffy soft brand. You was extra fluffy soft brand when you were using drugs. You just have to learn some new skills and new techniques, but you keep the same principles. The principles I used in active addiction was determination, persistence, uh, creativity, courage, uh, humility. Oh, I would get real humble if, if, if the dope boys was talking to me crazy. You know, sometimes I talk back and then and things, but I knew how to be humble and shut my mouth and then I get clean and I don't know how to control myself. You know, I, so I, I challenge people and we're going to talk about those topics um, here on the show. We'll make, I'll find some way to give away a couple of these books. They're really awesome. I also talk about uh, uh, This Is Nothing. That was uh, one of my favorite chapters in this book. Also, you know, the challenges I had in recovery, I had to learn how to, uh, uh, I had to classify them as nothing. Yeah, I'm facing some new challenges, but compared to that bondage of crack cocaine, my drug of choice was crack cocaine. That is a, that was some supersonic double jointed bionic bondage. I'm talking about working 168 hour shifts with no sleep. I would stay up literally for a week with no sleep. So I have to say now when I'm facing things in recovery, a lot of times I'll get overwhelmed. When I was going to school, this is too much. I don't know if I can handle this. And I would have to say, Anisha, this is nothing compared to what you had to go through with an active addiction. So those are some of the type of topics, non-traditional. We're going to come with some traditional topics, uh, you know, like that I mentioned earlier about coping skills and the difference between abstinence and recovery and, you know, grieving. Those are some topics that people are, a lot of people are familiar with when it comes to recovery. But we're going to talk about some non-traditional topics, you know, the trap and the cheese. Was it the trap or the cheese? We're going to talk about a place called Go. You know, a lot of times we get clean and we want to go after goals and we be stretching. You know, I think I should go to school. We be stretching for five or six years and stuff. Man, this is, this is, this, is, you got to have to get to the place called Go. So we're going to talk about the place called Go. I remember going to a support meeting when I had a few months clean, telling people I was going to go back to school and, People came up to me and they was like, you know, I'm thinking about going back to school too. I'm clean and I think I want to go after some of my goals, Anisha, and you've encouraged me and you've inspired me. Well, that was like 18 years ago. I have four degrees, two master's degrees, and a lot of those people are still stretching. And I'm not condemning them. I'm just saying there's a time when you're going to have to come to a place called go. You're going to have to come to a place where you'll be like, you know, I, I, I've, I've wrote the business plan 17 times. I've, you know, I went to 17 conferences about opening your own business. I've done all that. I'm talking to people in recovery. This is stuff, this show is about recovery. You know, a lot of different uh, things we say we're going to do, and eventually we're going to have to take that first step. Um, one of the topics um, we're also going to cover is uh, what do you define as real? You know, a lot of times our reaction, our reality is actually an illusion based on a distorted thought process. <laughs> I'll give you some concrete examples of uh, what I thought was real was actually an illusion produced by my distorted thought process. And when I changed my thinking, I realized this is not real. That was not real, Anisha. That was, uh, you know, you made that up. <laughs> so, and all of this is a part of the recovery process about learning how to live and enjoy life without the use of drugs. And it is possible. I am a list living testimony. You know, I'm not, I, even though I have the academic training, I'm a master, like I say, I'm not only a, a master's level therapist, I'm a certified alcohol and drug counselor, but all of this, my academic training, you know, is this is, I have practical experience. So we're not going to be giving you theory on this show. We may throw in some theory, but it's going to be wrapped around some experiences. You know, <laughs> we're going to tell you how we do this thing, how we walk this down. And there is hope. Again, this is you're listening to From Madness to Miracle. So please come out and, and uh, participate on September the 12th. At our recovery event, the dress is going to be business to 
formal or semi-formal rather business attire to formal semi-formal attire but feel free to come as you are it's open to the public there is no charge to attend the event it's being held Wednesday September the 12th from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Horizons Conference Center at 6200 State Street in Saginaw Michigan for more information on vendor booths or tables you can call Tanya Evans at 810-423-9139 or you can call Trenton Odette at 810-449-2678. Also, if you would like to um, RSVP, you don't have to, but if you would like to, you can call Miss Rochelle uh, Shelton. Her number is 810-238-7226. Well, that's all for our show for today. I will see you next week, and we'll have our first guest speaker on the From Madness to Miracle show. Uh, This show is sponsored by Odyssey House, and this is Anisha Freeman, a.k.a. The Locksmith. I make keys for people who are locked up in their minds.